this beautiful Grundig Majestic has been uh, reworked with some really cool features. First of all, when you open the lid, a magnetic switch inside turns the power on. And uh, we also have some added LED lighting here in the radio side and also the record player side, uh, extra lighting. And also the real player, which is not currently installed, uh, but it will be installed. So lighting in all three of those compartments. So when it turns on, when you open the lid, uh, you just leave the button on uh, whatever setting you want. In this case, FM is on. And uh, you don't have to press the off button because the lid will shut the power off automatically when you start to close it uh, because of the magnetic switch that's been added. So the FM radio works, works really nicely, um, as you can hear. And the tuning eye indicator here shows if you're uh, locked onto the carrier. So you can find your stations that way. Now the record player uh, you access by pushing this button. However, right now it's hooked up to a Bluetooth module. And the Bluetooth module is down here. And it's very easy to use. You just press the uh, Bluetooth button on top and then you look at your uh, device and find that Bluetooth uh, module to connect to it. And in this case, I've got it hooked up to a laptop. And so I'm, I'm playing uh, from the laptop here. And I could go to the uh, Bluetooth module settings here and it's one of the uh, e-sync and adapters. Uh, that's how it shows up as a Bluetooth module. And once you use the Bluetooth, you probably won't want to use anything else because it's so much fun. You can control the volume from your phone or your laptop or whatever. Uh, you can store records down here, reels or whatever. Uh, there's a record cleaner here, velvet cleaner, and a 45 extender adapter. Okay. Now, unfortunately, I have not figured out how to use this record player yet. Uh, all of these are different for turning them on and off, and this one I just have not figured out yet. So, um, at the moment, this is not actually functioning uh, the way that it should. But nonetheless, the AM and the FM uh, do work on this device. Just hearing a little bit of bleed through from the... Uh, So let me show you inside. Here's the back of the unit. Uh, this is the SO161UA. The first thing to notice is you don't need the power plug here because there is a power plug here uh, which has the new uh, electronic stuff built into it. This back panel falls down. This is the uh, FM antenna here and an AM antenna uh, you need a ground and antenna as it shows in the diagram here. Okay, inside there's the original radio unit, all original tubes. Uh, this adapter here converts the Bluetooth signal coming in into the, the uh, DIN 5 connector and this is where the real player was plugged in before. Uh, this is actually the cable for the real player right here. There's a switch that was added by someone uh, so that you could have normal input or if you flip it this way it's the RCA auxiliary inputs however if you use that switch it bypasses the radio too so in order to use the radio you have to come in here and flip it back to normal so I would opted to take the Bluetooth signal into the uh, real players input because uh, that's that way I can leave the switch on normal so that the radio and the real player both work over here is the magnetic reed switch here and the magnet is just above it on the bracket there. Uh, it says, uh, right, this is the magnet right here, a little cylindrical magnet that engages that switch and that switch uh, goes, oh, and this, uh, this wire back here is for the LED lighting and those go back into uh, this panel which we'll open in a second. Let's see, this 
white connector here is for the speakers. That's the outputs uh, that go to the speakers. And uh, let's see, this brown wire here is for the uh, record player, which I have not been able to get to work yet. Be careful when you're in here because these are live voltages uh, when the power is plugged in. So you want to be careful uh, not to touch those. Okay, so here is the uh, the left panel. If you're looking from the front of the device, uh, up here is the record player. To remove this, there is uh, two screws, one here and one all the way up in the front where if you have really small hands, you can reach it. Uh, and then there's a little, uh, some kind of a little T-bolt up here that you have to take the record player, lift one end and pull it. It's either that way or you push it this way, I can't remember which, and then the record player can lift out for maintenance. Uh, white one here is power for the record player, and the brown is the signal cable, which uh, gets plugged in here. Okay, so main power comes in, goes to this power strip. The first outlet here is not switched, and that goes to this 5 volt keep alive power. So the Bluetooth is always on, and the 5 volts is always applied and that runs through the magnetic switch over here and then comes back to the solid state relay. So when the magnetic switch is engaged, the solid state relay turns on and that energizes these three outlets here, the switched outlets. So in this case, uh, that turns on the LEDs with this power supply and the white wire here uh, is the one that goes to the radio and then when you turn the, when you have the radio not set to off, the power comes this way uh, up to the this junction which is for the record player and also goes over here and here which is where they connect it in for the real player. So it's fairly straightforward operation here. Uh, the only other thing to mention is this resistor here can be used to set the brightness of the LEDs. This is a 10 ohm resistor so if you need less brightness, you just use a larger uh, value resistor there, or more brightness, you would decrease that value. This is the original real player, and I have a YouTube video on trying to bring it back to life. Uh, it's been fully oiled, the, the uh, pieces turn, and so forth, uh, play, rewind, fast forward work, but cannot get any sound out of it. Uh, because it doesn't seem to want to capture the tape correctly and I'm not sure if there's something bent in there or if there's just a button on the front that I'm missing here. I did discover this stop button. Uh, it has to be, if it's pressed in, it won't play and you have to actually use your fingernail to push it down. Then it pops up so that it is unstopped. Uh, that was a really sly trick there for me to figure that one out. But that wasn't enough uh, to make it work. So. Still a little bit of a mystery. I don't know what these hieroglyphics mean. I know one is play, one is record, um, but still I can't get it to play a tape. And when you plug it in, you can turn it up to one side and the reels will spin. Uh, this is seven and a half inch per second or three and three quarter inch per second. And there's some funny button here, which I've been playing with that. You'll see it in the YouTube video. Uh, still not 100% sure what those do either. <laughs> it's uh, quite an enigma here trying to figure out how to get this real player to actually play. So also uh, really neat with this little Bluetooth adapter is there is a little plug-in which goes to two uh, RCA cables here for an auxiliary input to the Bluetooth module. So what this means is you can put a CD player, DVD player, whatever you want in this box, hook it up here and the sound will go through the speakers. Uh, further cool thing is there's still one space in that outlet behind this speaker for you to plug that CD player, DVD player, what have you, in to power that turns on when you open the, the cover on the unit here. So that gives you the opportunity to actually have uh, another device in here uh, to, to stream through your power, uh, through your audio signal chain. That is super cool, I think.